Good morning, welcome to the Pinkin YouTube channel. I'm Connor Southwell. This is our match day vlog number two. Uh, today we head to Burnley, although pertinently, you know, as I say, good morning there, and it is sunshine, so I've not left stupidly early. Um, we did oh, probably about three hours of the trip last night, so I actually find myself in a holiday inn in Stoke at the moment, uh, as is the glamour of, of this wonderful job. Um, and of course, today Norwich going up to the northwest to face Sean Dyche's Burnley at Turf Moor. Going to be a really interesting clash, particularly after all that happened last weekend at Carrow Road against Manchester City. Um, of course, Norwich recording a famous 3-2 win, a, a night that I think will live long in the memory of every City, every Norwich City supporter as well. So you can follow me around today. Uh, I'm literally just about to go and meet the guys for, for breakfast. Um, managed to get up on time, which is an achievement. So um, all going well so far. Uh, we'll catch them down there, see see what they're saying and and. and then uh, around 11 o'clock we will uh, make about, we've got about an hour and a half of the journey to go up to uh, up to Turf Moor. So um, fingers crossed we have no diversions or going around roundabouts multiple times or um, traffic. So fingers crossed and uh, yeah, I will, you basically get to follow me around today as is last week. I'll try and get as much as I can uh, recorded for this vlog as well. And remember if you do like what you see, make sure you uh, like this video and also subscribe to the Pink and YouTube channel. Uh, so much content on Norwich City Premier League games coming your way, not only for this week, but for the rest of the weeks to come as well. In 1,000 feet, turn left. So what do these two teams do now? Because there isn't... Behind us, see you, Norwich fans sitting in that cricket pavilion. There. See, we're literally parked, cars just behind us, literally parked in the cricket pavilion. And uh, that stand has been well and truly taken over by yellow and green shirts. Nice day, actually, in, uh, in Burnley. Good day for it. And there's Turf Moor, you can just see the top of the stand there. So, all set for a good day. Uh, a good day of football and hopefully three points for Norwich. Today's pressing food option, very very good pasta day I'll be honest. Fair play Burnley, that is very very good. And just like that we are here in the press box at Turf Moor, might just be able to see behind me, fantastic mm. backdrop just behind that main stand there. We are right at the back of this stand and if I just spin round in that stand down there, that is where the Norwich City supporters will be 2,300 of them this afternoon hoping for a repeat of last week's exploits in that fantastic 3-2 win over the English champions Manchester City there's actually as I just look to my uh, to my left over there some uh, there's a nice cricket green down there actually which uh, incidentally is, is where we parked and where you saw earlier all them Norwich fans in in that stand there is now a group of uh, children playing football behind that stand which is quite nice to see a really nice setup here actually at Turf Moor I think you can get stereotyped perhaps uh, being a, a northern ground in the northwest that, that isn't one of the, the powerhouses but actually very very nice setup nice compact ground you get the impression the atmosphere is, is going to be right on top of the pitch today and uh, Norwich City will hopefully be able to respond to that with three points we're yet to see the team but uh, obviously the major question mark is going to be whether Moritz Leitner is uh, fit enough to make the bench Mario Vrancic of course is not going to make this one although Patrick Roberts is back in contention uh, Daniel Farker said. So it's going to be interesting to see just how they go about that lineup today. Obviously, still with a fairly depleted back line. So there we go. About an hour and twenty to go until kickoff. An, an empty turf, more brilliant settings, and hopefully another win for the Canaries. It's Norwich City starting lineup today, as you can imagine, unchanged from the last week's win. A couple of changes on the bench. Patrick Roberts comes back in. Mo Leitner there as well. So no need for Daniel Farker to name two substitute goalkeepers this weekend. We just switch. Oof. And we get Burnley's. There you go. So that's uh, Poping Goal, Lauten, Tarkovsky, Mo and Peters. Of course, Peters uh, has the most assists for this Burnley side. For Hendrik Cork, Westwood and McNeil. In making up the middle of four, and Chris Wood and Ashley Barnes at front. A formidable, formidable physical presence up top for the home side. And on the bench, just the second inning, you may be able to see Robbie Brady. It'd be interesting to see if he comes on against his former club to make the impact. Those are your teams.
beat him. Right, number two, one up. intensity and the volume of Burnley's press really restricted Norwich getting out of, of their own half to be completely honest and it, it was a relentless wave of attack and of course you can hear now because the, the Burnley team are, are just emerging from the, from the second half but that second period of the first half was all about Norwich City imposing themselves a little bit more they had a fantastic chance down this left hand side with Timu Buki his shot saved by Nick Pope Two really poor goals to concede, and obviously the first a fantastic uh, set piece delivery from Ashley Westwood, which Chris Wood nods in from the near post. The and second, some, Norwich City. The second, some fantastic work from Dwight McNeil around City's right hand side. Got to the byline, cut it back, and Wood again with an emphatic finish past Crawl. They did have chances of their own half chances. Morris Leitner hit the post from a, from a good effort from from range after a nice spell of possession, and then really. Norwich's best spell of possession coincided with Burnley dropping off and allowed them just to impose themselves on the game a bit more uh, when they're in possession. This second half is going to be fascinating now because if Norwich can continue that wave of pressure and get an early goal, then the dynamic of it swings again. But it's been a really interesting tactical battle this one. Um, and so far, Sean Dyche has done what Pep Guardiola failed to and uh, it seemed to be nullified Norwich's threat from, from building attacks from the back early on. Well, there we go. That was a, a, a tough afternoon for Norwich City. Um, you could probably set that game up as the opening 20 minutes and then the rest of it, where Burnley came out with such an intensity, such a desire to press and almost suffocate Norwich in their defensive third of the pitch that they couldn't ever really get any degree of comfort playing the ball out from the back and building momentum that way. And they didn't impose their style as, as perhaps we've seen them do this year. Um, and that's because of the way Burnley pressed early on. I think the, the, their best spell of possession came later on in the first half after Burnley sort of dropped, dropped that press and dropped the intensity and dropped the volume of it. And it was a really difficult afternoon in terms of physically. Um, Ashley Barnes and Chris Wood are, are shrewd operators at this level, um, want to engage in, in the physical duels and the physical battles and came out on top, to be honest, for, for, throughout the game. And there were areas in, in the first half where it just looked like a physical mismatch for Norwich City across the pitch uh, against Burnley today and uh, when you consider last week and the way that arose you you almost sort of stand here today feeling slightly reflective um, 
because this was always going to be a difficult place to come after the Lord Mayor's show of, of last week. So for Norwich City, this game proved just a step too far and perhaps the, the game they didn't really want after Manchester City. But nonetheless, they came here, really struggled to create anything because of the effectiveness of the way that Burnley defended and they deployed such a deep block um, and pretty much did to Norwich what Norwich did to Manchester City last week and forced them into crossing opportunities that and of course Norwich are never going to be a team that, that wins aerial battles particularly against players um, who are of a particularly physical nature so that in itself created challenges the second half was was fairly open fairly stretched Burnley were, were always looking like a threat on the counter and Norwich City again just couldn't get that breakthrough that they needed so it panned out that by the end Norwich were enjoying possession a lot more were imposing themselves a lot more but just couldn't make the inroads in the final third that they needed to because of how dogged Burnley's defensive um, shape was and how will they reflect on that? I don't know. I, th I think what it will do is perhaps in s restore some reality to, to proceedings in, in NR1 and, um, you know, the the, shot, the sort of reverberations around that in terms of the support not getting carried away after last week. And they go now next week, a, a tough away tie, a, a tough away game rather, at Crystal Palace and Selhurst Park, which is notoriously not a very happy hunting ground for the Canaries. But they have to go again and try and impose their style at every single Premier League ground. Um, today they got nullified by a really solid defensive unit who are well drilled and well organised by Sean Dyche. And uh, I don't think that they will really consider themselves um, unfortunate not to have got anything from the game. Obviously Timu Buki missed a, a, a glorious opportunity early on after a spell of Burnley dominance. That was at 0-0. Maurice Leitner hit the post um, in the first half as well. Second half... Uh, Campwell had a shot, Buendia had a shot that went wide, Leitner again with another curling effort that went past the far post, but beyond that there was not too much to talk about from an offensive point of view and for me that describes perfectly just how well Burnley did today defensively. Um, we think of Norwich notoriously as sort of a slick attacking machine and, and today they were, they were nullified and limited to pretty, no, pretty much nothing. So um, a deserved win for Burnley I think across the piece, um, better side well drilled the midfield were energetic athletic um, and it was almost a, a typical Burnley performance I think you, you'll hear a lot after that and that's not disrespectful I think you've, you've got to credit them for that as well and what they've created in this place which was fairly formidable um, Jamal Lewis was on the end of some really loud criticism from, from those occupying the seats in the stands I mean now pretty much jeered at every time he got the ball um, but nonetheless that, that, that is it and Murray City uh, have been defeated by two goals to nil at Turf Moor and as I said previously Crystal Palace up next at Selhurst Park where they'll be hoping their fortunes can be turned again.